Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, I think I turned my mic on. Yeah, I did. Perfect. Uh, I'm Sean Bloom, uh, and I'm here as part of the IndieCade Summer Series, uh, which I'm super excited about. Uh, it's a program uh, that IndieCade is putting on all summer long. Uh, mostly, I understand, on Sundays and Wednesdays. Uh, they're streaming programs like this, uh, streams of, of games, um, uh, new games, demos, old favorites, also panels and other uh, uh, activities, tournaments, stuff like that. Uh, so I'm super excited to be a part of that uh, and to be here with you uh, streaming on the IndieCade Twitch channel, uh, Lucifer Within Us, uh, the upcoming game by Kit Fox Games. Love Kit Fox. Uh, they've done a bunch of really cool stuff. Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of their, their cult simulator, uh, and it's slipping from my mind. Uh, but they did a really cool uh, cult simulator game. It was sort of an experimental narrative generating game uh, that uh, makes me really excited to see what they're going to do to uh, to tackle sort of uh, m interactive mystery. Uh, uh, it's not cultist simulator. Um, I'm I'm mad at myself for, uh, for for forgetting Shrouded Isle. Eve, thank you very much. It's called Shrouded Isle. It's a really cool game. Um, anyway, I'm going to play Lucifer Within Us. Uh, this is a detective game uh, that's set in a sort of sci-fi future uh, that... Uh, anyway, I, I, I don't know that much about it. Uh, I'm going in cold because there's a mystery component and I want to be surprised by the mystery. Um, I'm going to dive in. I'm just going to start playing. Uh, and we're going to see together what this game is. A hundred years without murder, a hundred years without demonic possession. Then this. I am Sister Ada, exorcist and investigator. This is my testament to the massacre at St. Walpurga's Alley, Abbey. Uh, it is truth. Do not believe the lies of my accusers. Uh, that's rad. That's already rad. I like a game that starts with do not believe the lies of my accusers. Uh, Sister Ada, welcome. I am uh, Virgil, Chief Inquisitor at St. Walpurgis Abbey. We may be in need of your talents as an exorcist. You can survey the evidence yourself, but I think you will agree. Has there truly been a murder? It seems so. A respected priestess, Mother Miriam, passed this morning under suspicious circumstances. A demon may be present, here, even now, possessing someone. Rad. Makes me think a little bit about um, the tabletop RPG Dogs in the Vineyard. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever played that, but uh, it is not futuristic like this, um, but it is sort of this same kind of demon-based mystery solving. What happened exactly? Mother Miriam was only recently appointed as successor to Abbot Gregory. Uh, this morning she came to the workshop to receive her coronet of office, uh, like a crown. Um, something went wrong with the installation? Maybe not a crown. Yes, to put it mildly, the coronet oversurged, killing Mother Miriam. Brace yourself for the sight. Damn. Uh, then the workshop operators, Gideon and Reuben, are the prime suspects. They are brothers, right? Uh, this is the demo of Lucifer Within Us. Uh, new game. Uh, still in development, not out yet. But um, they've got this demo. Uh, yes, but it's highly out of character for Gideon or Reuben to kill someone. Even so, they were the only ones present when Mother Miriam died. Demons nurture our sinful desires into unthinkable actions, Virgil. One of the brothers has surely been seduced by a demon. This is a great setup. Uh, whichever it is, I will unmask his lies and cast out the demon within him. Uh, may aim sofs will be done. Amen. To exercise a demon, we must uncover four things. First, the suspect. We must identify which sinner is possessed by a demon. Second, the opportunity. When exactly was the murder committed? 
We can pinpoint the opportunity by analyzing each suspect's testimonies. Third, the means by which the murder has been committed. Uh, the means can be found among the physical evidence at the scene of the incident. Okay. Fourth, the motive of the murderer, which can be found in their inner world, their sanctum. Oh, damn. This is going to be cool. Uh, the motive will tell us which demon possesses the sinner. Uh, very well. Let us begin our holy work. I love that this game gives me, like, a timeline. Okay, so what can I do? I can click and move around walking imperiously like you do when you're a holy figure uh, and then I got some kind of a timeline that's gonna fill up down here and then uh, under here I have a picture of a person Miriam mother Miriam the victim newly appointed voice of AIN Sof Ain Sof I thought that was a name. This makes it look like it's a, a an abbreviation of some sort. I don't know. Who is scheduled to receive an Aether Coronet implant at the workshop. Okay. Gideon, who's the younger brother. And then the other one must be Reuben. Uh, this is madness. I will not suffer this injustice. I am Gideon the Grand, the greatest cybernetician of our generation. I am blessed. Ain Sof guides these hands, you see. Uh, your gaudy trinkets are hardly worth boasting about. Mother Miriam died by your hands. Is that not so? No. Why would I want to harm her? I don't know. I don't know you yet. Mother Miriam was my patron. She loved me like a son. The UI for this game is rad. I mean, the, the art design all around I am like a big fan of I did nothing wrong the consecration chamber must have been compromised uh, sister Ada is here to seek the truth Gideon you have nothing to fear if you are innocent please hear Gideon's testimony sister Ada and judge for yourself uh, if he speaks true testimony of a sus suspect is divided into events you can access detailed descriptions of events by hovering over them you can manipulate the timeline marker to navigate to any moment in the testimony. Okay, rad. Um, let's listen to what Gideon has to say. I'm going to hit play. Okay, so it's already sort of lined it up for me. This is what the testimony is going to look like. Mother Miriam came to me uh, for her consecration ceremony. I've performed this many times before, so I was confident. Okay, it's literally playing out the events. There's Miriam, there's Gideon. They're like talking about stuff. They're checking out, this is the coronet maybe. Talk, talk, talk. To prepare for the ceremony, I ordered Reuben to take Mother Miriam to the consecration chamber. So Reuben comes, leads her over to wherever. Wait a second. Meanwhile, I adjusted the coronet's amplification at my work table, then placed it on Mother Miriam's head. That don't make sense. Let's re-examine what he said about Miriam's arrival. Okay. Drag the marker. Change time. Right there. Do, 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 do. Okay. I think... Well, I'm going to see what kind of uh, instruction it gives me, but I think the contradiction is that I ordered Reuben to take Mother Miriam to the consecration chamber, and he does that, and she's gone, and then he says, uh, I placed it on Mother Miriam's head. She's not there anymore, right? So that is, what was that? Uh, okay, so there's some UI here about corroboration. So I'm going to move this, what he said about Miriam's arrival. Oh, yes, got it. Interesting. Gideon does not mention Reuben being present while greeting Mother Miriam. Okay, interesting. Now let's hear the rest of what he has to say. Reuben appears. Blah, blah, blah. Does, does his stuff. Okay, so that's... I'm not I'm not pointing out that contradiction yet. 
Okay, he does a bunch of stuff. He's fiddling around. Oh, that's why. It's not a contradiction. He goes and he puts it on her head. All right, and then he leaves. What happened to Reuben in the meantime? We don't know. Because Reuben follows her in there and then disappears and is gone at that point. Okay, sweet. Not a contradiction. Uh, I'm going to go back to this. We began by closing our eyes and praying together to Ain Sof. I thought I heard uh, the chamber open, but I didn't think much of it course yep there it goes then I activated the consecration chamber and began the ceremony itself the aether output was within safe ranges <laughs> who's that who's that dude Oh, is that Reuben? That must be Reuben. And then her head explodes. Holy. Then it happened. Mother Miriam was killed, but it's impossible. I had everything under control. And that's the end of time, I think. Okay. Great. Let's talk to Reuben and see what Reuben's story is. Uh, Roto Penguin in the chat says, uh, oh heck, it's a full chrome network activity trace UI, which is 100% what it is. You are running a stack trace on this murder, uh, which is rad as hell. I mean, I'm so into it. An exorcist. Surely there are no demons here, though. That's what a demon would say. This was an accident, wasn't it? If Gideon is possessed, that would mean he did it on purpose. Horrible. Definitely a demon. Uh, you're the elder brother. I see your name. My name is Ruben Garamond. I'm responsible for the engineering and design of our implants. How did Mother Miriam die, exactly? Uh, it was a completely preventable accident. Mother Miriam died because Gideon deliberately flouted the ceremonial guidelines for his own glory. Uh, Gideon may be my flesh and blood, but he must take responsibility for his negligence. Let us hear what Reuben has to say. Keep in mind that Reuben's testimony may differ greatly from Gideon's version of events. If an event is corroborated by another suspect's te testimony, it will be marked as verified on the timeline. Okay. Cool beans. Let's listen to what Reuben has to say. Play that sucker. Mother Miriam came down to us to receive a consecration ceremony, but she wanted something extravagant. It's her fault. Gideon suggested setting the coronet to have maximum aether output. I warned him that doing so was highly dangerous. Okay. So this is this is a contradiction, right? They were pointing out that earlier bit of tutorial was pointing out that Reuben was not here. So now Reuben's here. So contradiction. Gideon convinced her to move forward with the ceremony anyway. Since he was going to handle everything, I went back to my tasks. He's got a pretty sweet monitor set up, I will say that. This part of his testi testimony is rather long and repetitive. Let's move to the next section. <laughs> Try to stop ceremony. Hell yeah. God, this is so good. Oh, so good. I love it. Um, let's observe the, observe the rest. Uh, then the... Wait, go back to this. When Gideon activated the Consecration Chamber, I immediately felt something was wrong. I begged Gideon to stop, but he didn't listen. Then it happened. Unthinkable. Mother Miriam was killed. This was no accident. It was all Gideon's fault. I mean, that would still be an accident, right? Like, somebody can be at fault for an accident. Right? Is that... Am I... Do I have an incorrect definition of accident? Now that we've heard the testimony from each suspect, let's think carefully. There's only one truth to the chain of events of this morning, and I doubt that either brother has told it to us. So we must rely on Ain Sof's greatest gift, our minds. There are three ways we should consider what we've discovered. First is deduction, since there can only be one truth. If two things don't align, one or both of them is false. If Gideon and Reuben do not agree on something, someone is lying. Or, if what they say uh, does not match the evidence I find, then they must be lying. Okay? Second is induction. 
This is so good. This is like the detective game that I have always wanted. I should base my theory on uh, what I discover. If my theory does not align with any of the testimonies or evidence that I find, then I should discard it. If two theories are both possible, then I should prefer the one that has more information that supports it. That said, induction alone is usually not enough. Finally, abduction. I must hypothesize what could have happened, filling gaps in the information with my imagination. This is the fastest and most powerful way of thinking, but also the most fraught. I should engage with each of the three ways in order to uncover the truth. I wonder if there's an abduction mechanic, uh, or if it's just sort of like thinking about how to think about um, solving a mystery. Okay, so I'm covering it up, sorry everybody, but uh, I have a couple more people here that, I think this is just reference, right? Gideon, younger brother, crafts the casing and ornaments of implants and handles ceremonial aspects of the installation. So this is just a super handy little guide if I forget who people are. Uh, and Reuben, less popular to, than Gideon due to his dour, cynical demeanor and his focus on the engineering of the implants. All right, Reuben. Okay, I got a contradiction that I want to I wanna investigate, and it is, let's see, I'm going to go back and talk to Gideon. Talk to Gideon. Okay, so now I can go through this story again. Uh, can I ask? I don't really recall what he said or did at this time. Okay. That's fine. Let me try investigating the scene first. Control panel, a valuable piece of physical evidence. Uh, a new entry is now added in your evidence panel, which can be found in the lower left of your display. There you can access detailed information about the control panel. You must present them to the suspects in order to discover any contradictions. Very, uh, sort of, you know, Phoenix Wright sort of uh, presenting contradictory evidence. Um, okay, so I have a little, I have this little control panel. Uh, entry now used to activate and control the consecration chamber usage record records uh, show that the aether output during the ceremony was well beyond safe ranges that sounds like a contradiction uh, I'm gonna also examine just while I'm over here I'm gonna examine some other stuff used to open and close the consecration chamber only operable from outside the chamber usage records show that it was opened twice this morning which actually fits what uh, Gideon said, because he said he heard it open a second time, but he doesn't know what the heck was going on. Uh, and let's look at the body. Body was com is completely unharmed, except uh, her head has exploded into a mess of blood and bone fragments. So not completely unharmed, uh, partially unharmed, let's call it. Uh, coronet remains found near Mother Miriam's body. Parts of the amplifier component and bits of the casing have survived the explosion. Can I look at this sweet monitor setup? I'm going to do that. Okay, blueprints for the coronet. Plans for constructing the Aether Coronet. Purpose of the device seems to be to amplify the user's Aether output. The components are amplifier, casing, and limiter. Limiter seems like it would probably be handy, useful. All right, let's talk to Gideon about the fact that the uh, the output or whatever was not in Aether output was within safe ranges. I don't think so. I'm going to click on control panel. No, I'm not. I'm going to click on...
Hmm. Oh, Gideon. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the the text on the screen. Gideon claims that the Aether output values were within safe ranges, but the control panel indicates otherwise. Let's present the control panel to him and unmask his lie. All right, let's do it. Contradict. I'm gonna look at evidence. I'm selecting the control panel down here. Uh. Present. Got it. Lies. Unmasked. Love it. Love it. You lied, Gideon. The ceremony wasn't safe. Control panel's records show that the Aether output values were abnormal in abnormally high ranges. Uh, of course it was. Mother Miriam wanted the coronet as powerful as it could be. But I am Gideon the Grand. With my talents, I had it under control. I made no errors. Something else went wrong. I just don't know what. Okay. So arrogant uh, Gideon has amended his testimony let's examine maintain control over here uh, good this statement from Gideon's testimony is now verified for two reasons right like this thing pops up maintain control verified uh, specificity yes physicality control panel specificity it has a shorter time frame and describes a clearer set of events To physicality, Gideon's testimony now is consistent with the records from the control panel. Okay. I can assume that any verified statement like this is true. All right. I'll take it. I'll take it. What's more, the contradiction weakened the suspect's resolve. His eye of providence glows, which allows me to enter his sanctum. The digital representation of his mind. Let's use it. Damn. Let's use his third eye to enter his sanctum and see what truly motivates this suspect. Yeah, there's definitely some, uh, some, um, Ace Attorney vibes. Evidence discovered narcissist. Hmm, yep. I had to dive into his inner sanctum, digitally examining his mind in order to discover that he is a narcissist. I definitely didn't get a sense of that from talking to him. We only cracked the outer layers of his sanctum this time. Still, let's examine the psychological evidence that we found. Uh, there's a little brain icon. Interesting. This information will help me discern which statements to trust. A narcissist found in Gideon's sanctum craves attention and sincerely believes that he is the best cybernetician in the world. Let's quickly examine each statement in his testimony again. All right. Oh, that that counts. I'm quickly examining. Uh, wait, am I quickly? I'm not. That's okay. Excellent. Some of the statements are now supported by the suspect's psychology. Next, I must find correlations between the suspect's behavior and existing demons. Wait, okay. Okay. I'm going to open the... De demonology demonology totally like anthropology uh but where you you go to buy demons um lucifer the proud prince of demons and the eternal adversary of ainsoth uh manifests in the ambitious and strong-willed promising them their heart's desire in exchange for their whole their soul okay seems reasonable um he is very proud uh, Beelzebub the gluttonous damn that is a profile uh, simple minded demon that deliberate debilitates the host excuse me turning them into feral beasts the host is compelled to consume stranger and filthier things until nothing remains of their humanity wow uh, Sethanus the vengeful uh, a furious demon that stokes the simmering rage within the host preys upon the uh, fervent and the righteous goading them to take matters into their own hands Lotan the envious playful but deceitful demon who slowly drives the host mad with whispers of their own inadequ inadequacy the host blames others for their ill fortune until the apparent injustice drives them to take what is rightfully theirs probably not but it's probably this guy if the suspect is possessed, there should be a, psycholo be a psychological evidence that has a clear correlation with a demon. Yes. To obtain further psychological evidence, I must find more contradictions and present them to the suspect. 
Now that I have heard the testimony and gathered evidence, I can accuse the suspect. All right. To accuse the suspe suspect, I must establish the opportunity, means, and motive of the crime. Okay. I can try as many times as I wish, but there is only one true answer for each section. Let's try to establish the opportunity. Uh, present a section of the suspect's testimony. When could I have possibly harmed Mother Miriam uh, when you were adjusting the coronet? Um, right? I'm pretty sure... I'm going to say that. Present. Good. If it's a valid answer, the suspect will be forced to admit they could have committed the murder at that time. Otherwise, the suspect will give a counter-argument as to why that's impossible. You were the last person to handle the coronet. If the coronet was damaged during the events of this morning, do, 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 it must have been while you were adjusting its output. Means. For this, I need to present physical evidence. By what means are you claiming that I killed her? Does the control panel count? Uh, let's see. I'm going to try to present the control panel. Good. Same as before. The suspect will accept my evidence if it is valid and deny it if they can explain why I'm wrong. The control panel and the shattered coronet indicate that there was a dangerous amount of aether output. Yes, I was performing something slightly dangerous, but I had it under control. Clearly not, given what happened. You could have stopped the ceremony. Because I was confident I could do it safely, uh, something else must have gone wrong pathetic excuses uh, I need to present a psychological evidence from their own sanctum yeah this I'm not so confident in good if he's the culprit then presented with the correct motive the demon within him will compel him to speak the truth that's interesting that's interesting I like that because they're the this game is playing around a little bit with uh, you know it's it is identifying a lot of procedure uh, when it comes to, like, sussing out what really happened and uh, uh, confronting suspects and, and solving a mystery and all of this kind of stuff. But there is a little bit of gaminess to if you figure it out, then, uh, then it will be verified for you, right? And this is justifying that a little bit in the theology of the game, which I like. I like a lot. If not, he will deny my claim. Uh, I loved Mother Miriam. Why would I hurt her? You are a self-absorbed man. Everything you do feeds into your pride. To you, Mother Miriam was a mere prop for your masterpiece. You carelessly caused her death in pursuit of artistic glory. How dare you? I took the utmost care in everything I did for Mother Miriam. The coronet was designed to be worn by her. Without her, it will re forever remain imperfect. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I would never risk anything that could harm my work or Mother Miriam. Okay. I'm going to return. My accusation was unsuccessful, which means I must investigate further. Let's cancel for now and leave the suspect. Wait, does that mean that uh, that these were right? That he, he did not have a valid defense for these? Which I think is what happened. Uh, but the, my motive was wrong because he was able to defend against that. Uh, it was an accident. I am faultless. I swear it. Okay. I need to gather more evidence so I can leave. I'm going to keep... I'm going to investigate physical evidence some more because if I learned anything from Phoenix Wright, it's that I need to gather all of the physical evidence first so that I have stuff to uh, to back up my con uh, my accusations against suspects. Okay, consecration ceremony. Place the coronet and the recipient in the chamber. The performer and the recipient pray in silence. Begin the song to start modulating the aether. Oh, I don't I don't know that anybody mentioned a song. Intensify the aether output by bringing the performance to a crescendo. Okay. Uh, Cornet Limiter. Found in Gideon's workspace in pristine condition, 
component is required to safely install the cornet without causing an aether oversurge. Does that mean that he didn't install it uh, like he was supposed to? I think that's what that means. Um, it was also mentioned, let me see if I can find it, in the cornet blueprints, plans for constructing the aether cornet, amplifier casing, and limiter are the components. So I think it's more than just a tool. I think it's a component that is meant to actually be uh, on the uh, on the crown. Okay, is there other physical evidence that I can gather? I did um, I did skip a thing because it didn't mean anything to me. But uh, in what's his name, Ruben's computer, I found blueprints for a spear. Plans for restoring a relic that was recently brought to St. Uh, Walpurgis by Father Augustine seems irrelevant to what we are doing. Uh, I already looked at this horror show of a murder scene. I can't investigate any of this stuff. Um, okay, can I... Here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. Let me see if I can figure out how to do it. I'm going to talk to Ruben. Ruben has uh, tells a story of the events that does not involve the door opening twice, right? Like Mother Miriam goes in there, and then he's working, 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 and then her head explodes. So at some point, that door opened a second time. It can only open from the outside. Let's see if he has any explanation for that. I'm gonna, uh, I have the door controls, I think are, whoops. Door controls are how I'm gonna confront him on this. So, Ruben's testimony, we're down here, discuss ceremony, return to work. Curious, Ruben claims he went back to his workstation, but Gideon says Ruben opened the door to the consecration chamber. I must unmask his lie, totally. Oh, okay. To prepare for the ceremony, I ordered Reuben to take Mother Miriam to the Consecration Chamber. Okay. Present that. Lies unmasked. A new Sanctum Chamber. Reuben Garamon, you did not return to your workstation after the discussion. Gideon ordered you to open the Consecration Chamber for Mother Miriam. Ordered me? Is that what he told you? Despite his delusions, Gideon is certainly not my master. I did open the chamber, it's true. I apologize for the omission. It is a regular part of our routine that it, uh, it slipped my mind earlier. And that actually, I wanna accuse him because I think he's guilty, but that is that seems pretty legit, actually. Uh, let's examine open chamber. Good, this statement from Ruben's testimony is now verified for two reasons. Open chamber, verified. Corroboration, yes. Specificity, yes. Physicality, door controls. Okay. Corroboration, Gideon's testimony confirms that Ruben opened the door. Specificity, it has a shorter time frame, describes a clearer set of events. I can assume that any verified statement like this is true. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm still... I want to contra contradict this return to work with the door controls. Heck yeah, lies on mask! That's what I'm talking about. You test my patience, Ruben. Has your memory slipped once more? The door records show... I mean, this dialogue is fantastic. Uh, just in like how responsive it is to events. And I don't know if that's a very careful planning of how this is branched or if there is some underlying narrative logic uh, just to, to make it real smooth, but is it's very good. Door records show that the consecration chamber was open twice today. Given that Gideon was praying during this time, only you could have opened the chamber. It's true that I opened the chamber again, just before the ceremony started. But I had my reasons. Something about the chamber seemed unseemly. 
Given what happened to Mother Miriam, I feel vindicated in my fears. Tell me what you did in the chamber. Okay. Since Gideon was going to handle everything, I went back to my tasks. Couldn't shake the feeling something was wrong. Uh, I opened the consecration chamber to verify that the cornet was in working order. Everything seemed fine, so I returned to my desk again. I don't... I don't think that's true. Because it's missing its... Um, cornet limiter. Okay, I'm going to try to contradict him here. With the cornet limiter. Apologies, Sister Ada. I do not follow your logic. Okay, that's fine. Everything seemed fine, so we changed... Okay. Okay. I'm gonna leave again. Ruben definitely did it. Yes. 100%. Excellent. I have gone through the fundamental steps of investigating a murder. Excellent. However, there is much I have yet to uncover about this incident. I should continue to find more information, contradict the suspects with them, and try to accuse a suspect. No one will tell me when I am ready to accuse. That is entirely up to my discretion. However, there are no consequences for a failed accusation. Each failure will help bring me closer to the truth of the incident. Uh, hey, Ruben, did your eye thing open up? Yeah, hell yeah, there we go. What is your deal, Ruben? Believer. I mean, that seems, that doesn't seem like a bad thing, really. Envy. There is an envy demon. That's true. Oh, I can go. Oh, there we go. I, I didn't click on his head star. Uh, Envy. Found in Reuben's sanctum. Why does Gideon get all, uh, the credit for all of Reuben's hard work? If only Reuben could be exposed for being... If only, sorry, Gideon could be exposed for being the fraud that he is. That seems like motive to me. Found in Reuben's sanctum. A uh, faithful servant of Ain Sof, or so he thinks. He knows that cybernetics are a critical part of the one truth. Uh, sure, of course, we all know that. I'm going to open up my demonology. Uh, and who is vengeful? Probably not. Probably Lotan the Envious. Uh, probably Lotan. Okay. Um, let's see. What can I do? I want to go back to Gideon. That is nice. That's nice that I can just click here and, and go straight to it. Uh, okay. We began by closing our eyes and pray, praying together to Insof. I thought I heard the chamber open, but I didn't think much of it. Yeah. Okay. That seems like that's the same, I think. Um... Okay, I adjust the coordinates amplification in my work table and place it on Mother Miriam's head. What does that look like? He puts it down. He does this thing. He's like tooling around. But then he picks the whole thing up, right? So there's some physical evidence that contradicts this, right? There where he picks the whole thing up, I have physical evidence in the form of the coronet limiter that was left on the table. Uh, oh no, I'm gonna contradict. Present. I have no idea what this means, okay. Maybe I can ask him about it. Recognize this component, Gideon? It was found at your workstation. The coronet limiter! Impossible! But the explosion! How can it be undamaged? Someone must have removed it from the coronet prior to the ceremony. Ah, uh, all but ensuring that the ceremony would end in a bloody mess. I had nothing to do with this. Why would I sabotage my own work? Why indeed? Okay, so... I'm gonna... Let me make an accusation, because I feel like... I don't know if I'm ready to do that. 
but I do, I have some evidence. Opportunity. When would he have done this? When he went to check the chamber. During the prayer, you claim to have opened the chamber to check the materials. This is when you sabotaged the ceremony. Means. Gideon was the one that operated the device. How could I have affected the chamber of Mother Miriam? With that damn coronet limiter. Present. Uh, there was nothing faulty with the coronet itself. Indeed, the craftsmanship was flawless, as with, was Gideon's performance of the ceremony. But you removed the limiter from the coronet without Gideon's knowledge, which coupled with the coronet's high amplification caused an oversurge. Gideon's arrogance may have endangered Mother Miriam, but you ensured that she would die from it. And his motive uh, is this uh, envy thing. Present that envy. Mother Miriam's death was merely a means to an end. Humiliation of Gideon. You envy your brother's success. You want his fame, his glory. Uh, accuse. Heck yeah, that sounds like I got it right. Uh, so the demo ends before I can exercise the demon. Um, for uh, reasons of spoilers for the, the final thing. But uh, I feel good about um, having sort of solved that mystery. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a demo, right? Like that's kind of a tutorial mystery. And so it serves it up a little bit. Um, like it plays into some tropes uh, that suggest how you should proceed and, and make it um, a little bit more straightforward to solve but uh that was rad i enjoyed that quite a lot um let's uh uh i'm gonna open this up for questions i think uh because i don't i can't this is the only demo that i have i'm gonna actually open the demo back up uh so that we can tool around in the interface um but if anybody has questions about this experience that I can answer with no knowledge other than this playthrough, right? Um, uh, just as a player, uh, I'd be happy to talk about it uh, or try some stuff out. You should 100% definitely go to Steam and wish list Lucifer within us uh, because this game is already rad uh, and I can't wait for there to be sort of like more mysteries. Um, and the, the exorcism part sounds like really intriguing. I don't know what that looks like. It, it reminds me more of dogs in the vineyard than I would have imagined. Like I didn't, I don't know if that was actually an influence, but it is playing with a lot of the same themes. And so it, uh, it plays with them in some of the same ways. Dogs in the vineyard is a, is a tabletop role-playing game. That's all about sort of. Uh, characters like Ada, uh, you know, virtuous paladin characters uh, who are sort of in charge of the religion, um, who have to settle disputes in sort of western frontier towns. Uh, it's like a, American western uh, themed. Um, and there's a lot of like, you know, demons are uh are trying to influence people's behavior and get them to do bad things and uh you are the voice of the religion and you have to come in and figure out who's possessed by a demon and bring them to justice so it's a lot of like similar uh uh similar themes similar types of stuff to this where it feels like you know, that's sort of what my role is. Uh, it's also, there's, I'm, I'm curious to see if there is more world building in the direction of it's been a hundred years since there was a murder. Uh, does that mean it's been a hundred years since there was a um, possession? Like since demons were an issue? Or are we just like really effective at finding the demons? And if not, if this is like the first time that this has happened in a hundred years uh you know where does my training come from is that just like tradition that's been passed down 
in case something like this ever happened again. I'm super curious about like what this world is. There's clearly a lot of technology and a lot of spirituality mixed together in super interesting, super interesting ways. Um, you can exercise the demon in the full version, available to add to your Steam wish list 100%. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm super excited about that. I don't think this game has a release date yet. Uh, it's still in development, um, and uh, you know it, it'll it'll be released when it's ready. Basically, is where we're at. But you can see from this, there is a lot here. Um, so uh, I can't make any promises about when this is going to be released, but um, it's it's clearly a ways into development. Hopefully it'll be sometime soon. Uh, and it seems like, I mean, that was fun to play that little bit uh, and to sort of explore the mechanics of investigation and contradiction. Um, I mean, that... I, I would like to do more of that and to be uh, sort of let off the leash a little bit um, doing that. I think if if you were solving a, a mystery like this in a larger space with more characters, it gets really complicated really fast. I can see how that would uh, potentially get hard, um, like difficult to manage, um, but really cool. It'd be, it'd be fun to sort of figure that thing out. I wonder if there are clues that I missed. I definitely feel like there were some, I don't know what the game counts as contradictions. Like, uh, well, was there anything in the testimony that I felt was incorrect? I guess I, I went down, a, I did some bad abduction, right? As the game teaches us those terms about how the coronet or how the, uh, the limiting what was that called? The limiter? Uh, how the limiter sort of got back onto the table. Um, I was I was accusing the wrong brother of that, but... Um, yeah, maybe I got it all. Maybe there wasn't other, other stuff. There's a loose end in that spear that sort of suggests, I guess, a larger world, right? Um, and presumably... These, this game would be a series of cases that kind of connect together, that that uh, that all take place in this world. So, um, you know, the spear brings up this idea that uh, this abbey is collecting relics from outside. Uh, there's a lot of potential in the world building there that I like stuff that I want to know. I want to know about uh, sort of what is the role that this abbey has in the world but also what are the the day-to-day -day operations that go on here um you know in terms of of gathering and repairing relics that seems sort of wild relics implies uh something old right like old i wouldn't normally think of it as technology but like uh a relic that is found and repaired uh is that also sort of cybernetic? Um, does, is the world so full of uh, of technology that, like, you know, it has it has that kind of legacy? Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dig around a little bit. I wonder. I'm, uh, I wonder if I can find anything about how the tutorial is structured by uh, by sort of breaking it a bit in terms of sequence. So I can look at physical evidence before I talk to the brothers, which I didn't do last time. And it tells me a little bit about uh, what to do with that. It seems actually really good at being non-linear in some key ways, uh, which is tough for a uh, tutorialization to do, actually. Um, like that takes a lot of forethought and planning and then implementation.
so I can gather all of this stuff. Cool. And then go talk to folks in a different order. So do I get, I must, I must, must get all of the tutorialization here. Uh, in a, for like different sections of text because I'm talking to a different person first. play through a different set of uh, of of story points actually maybe it's just separate this is actually okay all right I get it this is smart so it's it's not gonna it's not gonna give me the same tutorialization uh with a different person it is going to split up the tutorialization 100 percent. so it's just divided logically so that uh these are two independent parts of how to operate the interface uh and this one is about how to like skip through time and it's not gonna talk to me at all about oh Damn, that is brutal. That is brutal. Uh, it's not going to talk to me about sort of the um, contradiction stuff, right? Is what I learned from from this dude. Oh, but he did talk about verifying, which I don't remember from the first time. So maybe uh, because we have something to verify against, it's now possible to verify some of this stuff. Yeah, Ruben discussed ceremony verified because it matches uh, what we're seeing here. Well, it doesn't actually. Hmm. That's what this is going to be all about. I love, I just got to say, like, as an aside, I love the idea of this kind of play box uh, where you can, you can do this kind of, like, skipping through time and seeing things play out. I have always found that fascinating, and that's... A thing that I like about time loop style games, about like uh, Sexy Brutal, uh, or even you know um, Majora's Mask, stuff like that. I really enjoy that idea of uh, there is a world that is playing out that is a that, that's a little music box, um, and you can be in a place and sort of watch part of it play out. Um, yeah, so this is just a whole different way of interacting with the timeline. It's just a separate thing. Yeah, cool. That's well done. That's sort of a well-designed tutorial. Um, anyway, I find it like really interesting and satisfying to have this kind of uh, bird's eye view on stuff happening, to like watch these characters to sort of rear window even to to see a little glimpses of this and do the um what was it uh ab uh objective uh reasoning to figure out sort of like what is what is happening in the in the moments when you don't see what's happening Very cool. Anybody have anything they want me to try? Now I've gone through sort of the tutorial section or the, the 
the linear part of that. Can I can I talk to this guy? Gideon claims the incident was an accident, but Reuben claims it was Gideon's fault. Are either of them telling the truth? Perhaps there's another possibility. Can I go downstairs? Oh, dang, I can go downstairs. How far can I go downstairs? Just to here. Okay. I, I mean, I mentioned the art style before, but, like, I guess mostly in the context of the interface. Uh, well, not even all of that. Like, a lot of the dialogue stuff uh, I really super appreciate. I just, I really like the... Uh, the use of lines uh, and curves and corners and things here. The sense of like glow to everything is very cool. It's very nice. Like that's a that's a um, commonality between visual representation of technology and spirituality, and so it it plays into that really heavily. I think in sort of a really super interesting way. Um, Oh no, what am I doing? What it what Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um but but also the visual style of the environment is really cool. I like this. Uh Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to dig this game. Cool. Um, so like I said, this is uh, part of Indiecade's summer series, uh, which is really exciting. Indiecade, the Indiecade Festival is going to be happening this fall uh, over the course of, I think, nine days. Let me look up this information. Uh... Indiecade anywhere and everywhere. Uh, for 2020 online festival separating independent games uh, with nine full days of 24 hour programming uh, October 16th through 24th um, that's going to be awesome that is that is a ton of stuff holy cow uh, late submissions are still open at uh, indicate.com slash submissions so if you have a game uh, that you think belongs in that nine full days of 24 hour uh, programming, uh, submit it to Indicade. Uh, Lucifer Within Us, I believe, will be there. Uh, I, I, I expect, I actually don't know that that's official, but uh, I certainly expect it given. Uh, you know, the way that this game looks and plays, uh, this, this belongs at Indiecade. Um, and then uh, this summer, uh, like I said earlier, most Wednesdays and Sundays, uh, at this time, 11 o'clock Pacific, uh, which is 2 o'clock Eastern, um, Indicade is hosting, streaming content on their Twitch channel, um, uh, games that were selected for the E3 showcase, uh, new submissions, selected Indicate alumni, panels, tournaments, other adventures uh, with devs and other folks. So uh, uh, look up the schedule, check out the Indicate Twitter account, um, come back to Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Indicate, uh, and check out all of the stuff that they are doing here. Kit Fox, uh, thank you so much for letting me play this early demo uh, or this this you know early build of the game, this demo for Lucifer Within Us. 
I enjoyed this immensely. I think this game rocks. Uh, I am super excited about playing the full version. Um, folks, make sure that you go to Steam and wishlist this game uh, because that will help out Kit Fox and also it will help you remember uh, to pick it up when it comes out, um, which you are definitely going to want to do. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think I am going to sign off uh, and uh, and turn you over to um, uh, who's coming up next. I think uh, it is... Uh, I lost it. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Scarizard. Scarizard is going to be playing uh, this demo in just a minute, uh, which um, should be a lot of fun, actually. I'm curious to see how they do it differently. Um, so uh, I'm signing off. Uh, I'll talk to you all later. <laughs>